Hi everyone, this is Trisha, and I'm back again today with another video. This time I'm showcasing some of the brand new stamp sets from Art Impressions. These new sets are so awesome, and I was so excited to get to play with them. In this project, I'm going to show you the new Wishing Well stamp set, as well as some new flowers and foliage sets. I'm also using the small grass from the original foliage set. Let's get started. I started off by using one of my Spellbinders ovals and using a pencil just lightly traced around the inside of the oval. This is going to give me a nice guideline for where to place my well, my well as well as where I'm going to put that swag for the top and the bottom. So I started off by inking up the stamp with some sepia and you'll see I'm going to I'm going to speed this up a little bit so that you don't have to watch me do every step, um, but I believe I, I don't start speeding it up for a little while, so I'm just making sure that I get all those little parts of the stamp. Then I take my Prussian blue, which is a nice blue color that's going to give us a nice whitewash kind of a look, and I'm just re-inking the entire stamp up again. Now I'm going to take and I'm going to stamp it right in the center of that oval. I erased some of the lines so they weren't so so dark so you can barely see that I can see it but you can barely see it in the video. The lines. So now I'm just taking my brush as you can see I sped this up a bit and I'm just pulling that color outside of the lines and into the center. I'm going to start pulling it out where I think it should be the darkest and just pulling them in to give a nice variation in color. So in this in this area under here, this is going to be really dark. So I'm I'm actually going to take some some more color and put it on my color palette and I'm going to bring that in. So right now I'm just quickly pulling out the color out of the lines. And we're going to do this little bucket and I want to make sure that I don't color everything in completely. You want to leave a nice highlight, give some dem some definition and some dimension to your paintings. So now I'm just pulling the color out of the back of the well as well as on each one of these little stones. I'm staying within each one of the stones because I don't want to get rid of those lines. I really want that definition. So I'm going to soften each line individually. Then we're going to move on to the bottom. And what I want to do is I want to really have the sides and underneath that lip dark and then move on into the middle and make it lighter and lighter. I'm kind of going in between some of the stones, making some of them dark, making some of them light. It's going to give some interest and give you some texture. So now I'm going to put some sepia on my palette. And then with my paintbrush, I'm just going to fill in some of those cracks I guess I guess they're cracks or the stones that are in there it's like the stuff in between the stones and I really want to darken in the back of that as well as add a little to the stones on top I'm not coloring it in completely because I really want that highlight I'm just trying to add some some color to to this little wishing well give it some dimension so I'm just going to continue to add where those dark areas would be. I'm going to take my paintbrush and I'm just going to pull a very little bit of color outside of the lines in the background. I do this on a lot of my projects and it just gives a little bit of interest and makes your projects a little more 3D, a little more dimensional. I guess that's the word, today's word is going to be dimensional. <laughs> So now I'm going to go back in with some more sepia and just darken in those areas again. I assume my light source is coming from my top right hand corner and that's how I'm going to judge where my where my highlights are going to be and where my shadows are going to be. So I'm giving that a little bit of color underneath that bucket because that would have a shadow. And then just adding a little bit of shadow to each of these rocks. 
this is not a realistic rendition of a, of a, of a wishing well. This is just me painting a cute little wishing well. So when you're painting, you should just, just do it for fun. You don't have to get caught up on how realistic everything looks. So now I added more, a little more Prussian blue to whatever was left of the sepia on my palette because I wanted to kind of soften up this little bucket, make it look a little silver. So I'm just putting in some highlights here. Now I took this cute little vine. This is a new vine from the new set and I know that I'm going to use it a lot. It's, it's great. It looks like a vine that is kind of growing up, I guess. I don't even know what, how to, I, what I want to say, growing up. It's, it's like a vine that's going to, I don't even know. So I'm just, it's just a vine that it looks really cool. <laughs> so we're just going to put in some of these. I softened those leaves when I was trying to figure out what words I wanted to use. And then there's another another little leaf set in the um, the new foliage set. So I used one of those. I think I only used one of those stamps in that from that set to create some additional little leaves to put in the back and on the sides. Now moving on to this little this new little flower from the mini flower set, and I'm inking it up in the magenta. And this is going, I know, this is going to be one of my favorite stamps. It looks like a couple little hearts, but it is just such a cute little stamp, and oh, I just love it. And magenta is one of my favorites, so I know I'm going to use that a lot. I know here we're still in the winter. Right now I'm in Vermont. We don't have enough snow to snowmobile, but I'm still holding out hope for more snow to come before I start getting into spring and doing some spring stuff, but I figured I would do this little this little wishing well and I had originally stamped it and created it on another card that I shared on the Art Impressions blog. If you go over to their blog for Watercolor Weekend and they're also having a challenge, which depending on when you're watching this video, that challenge may or may not be going on, for a Watercolor Wonders challenge so you could make a any kind of watercolor picture using their art the art impressions watercolor stamps and entered into the challenge and then you could win a gift certificate to their store to buy some stamps of your own so right here I used the the old foliage has the the grasses the small grasses that I use in almost all of my paintings so I stamped it in and then pulled the color out of the lines and it just wasn't deep enough for me so I put some of the olive green on my palette and then just went along those lines again. So now here I'm just putting in a little sky behind the wishing well. I'm just using a just using blue and some water and then I'll use my paper towel just to dab some of that off and I'll use some clean, clear water just to soften some of those hard edges. Anybody who, if you watch my videos, you know I'm all about the sky. And I knew I wanted to put the sky in before I stamped the top and the bottom swags. Just make sure when you're moving on that your, your work is dry before you move on or that will not work out well. So this is a new vine from the new foliage set and some new flowers from the new fo the foliage set the foliage no no none of that it's actually from the mini flower set so i stamped those in some sepia as well as with i believe it's the african violet and now i'm going in with that heart flower stamp again with some magenta and just placing those here and there really wanted this to look like it was an outside thing looking into the wishing well. And I'm going to show you how I attempted to make that happen. 
Right now I'm going along with this vine. There are two, they go diff opposite ways. So now I'm using the opposite, the mirror image of that vine that I used up top to create this one on the bottom. And I'm going along the lines that I created with my spell binders. So here you see I made a mistake. I didn't want that little vine to be so, to go so far. So I just added some water to it and used my paper towel to pick that color right back up again and no harm, no foul. So I'm taking those exact same stamps from the top and then just moving them and doing them down on the bottom. Again, I'm using the African violet, the olive green, and the magenta. Now I'm just going to take my brush and I'm going to soften all those lines. I'm not going to touch the blooms that have the sepia and the branches because they don't need to be touched. I'm just going to touch the blooms of those, but I want to do all my greens before I move on to my, my blooms because I don't want the colors to mix. So I'm just softening up all of those greens first. Then I'll go in and I'll just touch those blooms on that new little flower from the mini flower set with the African violet. You don't need much water for these at all. I'm just quickly touching them. And then I'll rinse my brush and I'll come back in and I'll soften up all of those little magenta hearts. They don't take very much at all. They just, they're so sweet and they're so little that it's very quick and easy to touch all these little, these little flower hearts. Now I'm going to go in with the back of my sepia, my, my fine tip, and I'm just darkening some of those areas that I thought needed just a little bit more, needed to be a little bit darker. I think my marker is getting dry, so I need to get a new one. And then underneath that eave, I just wanted to be really, really dark. So now that's all set. So I'm going to sign my project. And then I kind of went in and decided that, okay, now how am I going to do this? So I took my, I took a gray marker and I was following the edge of that line that I made for my spellbinders, which what I should have done was take my spellbinder again and used it as a, as a guide because I kind of screwed it up. As you can see, it's a little wonky there on the right. So I tried to fix it by putting in a little bit of this shadow with the same color figured I could just pull it out. It didn't really work. So I'm going to try a couple times to soften it up, pull it out, and it just kind of makes it worse. So then I believe I decided that I just, I kind of gave up. Like that right, the left hand side looks fine. So that was going to be, that one was going to be fine. So then I'm like, okay, maybe I need to use that as a template again. Of course, you want to wait until everything is super dry before you start putting things down on your project. As you can see on the left-hand side, it wasn't really dry. So I'm using one of my Copic markers. This is a Copic multiliner, and you'll see I'll try to put it down there. It's not dry, so it's not going to work. <laughs> so I'm like, okay, let me try to pull some more of that color back out where it's not going to be needed. So I'm really saturating this and really trying to pick it up with my paper towel, which it was good enough. It was fine. I didn't end up, I tried it on the other side too, just to pick up some of that color again. So I could try to start over. And this is just me being a perfectionist. No one would probably even notice it, but it drove me crazy. So now I'm waiting until, I waited until it was dry, dry. And then I'm going to reposition this and I'm going to take my multi-liner and I'm going to go over that a few times just to get a nice black line. And then I'll do the same on the other side. In hindsight, this would I would do this first, 
then put the gray shadow in. But live and learn. Now I'm going to take my gray marker again and I'm going to put in that shadow again because it this really does make it look like you're looking in to a window almost. I really like the way that looks and I know that I'll probably do it again and again or on other projects. I have some other ideas and I really just like the way it came out. So that's it. That's our project for today. I hope you really enjoyed doing this little wishing well with me. Thank you so much for stopping by and if you'd like to see other videos just hit that subscribe button. I'm linking a couple of other videos that I thought you might enjoy here and head over to my blog for more information. Thank you so much and have a great day.